Hello. Hello. Look who's with me. <laughs> Amanda, your favorite. I know that's who you want to hear more from than me, but uh, yes, she's on here tonight uh, to make sure that uh, I don't say anything stupid. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Am I right off to a good start? Mm, yeah, yes. we'll see. Uh, so we got a lot to cover tonight, and I thank you for being here and for taking the time. Uh, first things first, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and say something in the chat. I'm sure you want to. Uh, go ahead and just tell us where you're from. You can even just type the number one, whatever you want to do, just to uh, communicate to YouTube the algorithm that you're watching and that this is something worth seeing. And we've had a lot of people who've come to the show uh, because uh, the, our live stream came across their feed and they were interested in it. And so, uh, yeah, just uh, make a comment and you can start sharing this with your friends, letting them know that you're watching. If you're on Facebook, do the same thing. If you are uh, watching on the app, unfortunately, there's no algorithm there that's going to matter. But we are grateful that you are watching the app yeah. because the app is the number one way to watch the show. It's currently one of the only places you can watch season three. Right now, season three is only available in the Chosen app or the Angel app, and it's totally free. Uh, how much did you pay to watch the first three seasons? With my life and sweat and <laughs> tears, quite a bit, but uh, not a lot of money. Yeah, that was a different <laughs> answer than I was expecting. You were just supposed to say nothing. Nothing, but, uh, it's sure. free. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, you paid plenty. You paid, paid plenty. But uh, you don't have to pay any of those things uh, to watch it. It's completely free on the Chosen or Angel app. And if you're watching this live stream on that right now, thank you. It's great. Uh, so, a couple things we are going to go over tonight. It's going to be a big one. And uh, a lot of people here, a lot of new people here, no doubt, because they want to hear from us. And no doubt they want to hear from you, I'm sure. And uh, let's try to be respectful in the chat. Let's try to be measured and calm and living out uh, God's requests for how we talk to each other. But first things first, let's do something a little bit light and fun before we get into a few bigger things. Look what we're wearing. What does this say? My rabbi walks, walks on, on water. water. Uh, I know that we're not Jewish, but uh, Jesus was and is it was a rabbi. And uh, we just thought it was like a cool phrase, a cool way of uh, pointing out that, uh, and there's a line in season four from a couple of our, uh, our cast actually, of the characters who say, I believe in a God that walks on water. And it's one of our favorite quotes. We heard it from a preacher once and uh, love it. Kind of so, say it to ourselves sometimes yeah. now too. It's become a part of our vernacular a little bit. Yeah. So I uh, just thought this was a kind of a cool way to express that. Uh, simple, straightforward, bold. Um, and uh, I think it's going to raise some uh, some good questions and some fun and some conversations and also makes a strong statement and it allows you to uh, express yourself. And uh, also... Look at the new hat we have. Amanda is already wearing it. I'm not mm -hmm. going to wear it the whole uh, live stream because it does wonders to my hair. But I do love how <laughs> I do love how it looks. And again, it's simple. Simple. It's the three fish, the teal fish going in the opposite direction. Hashtag be the teal fish. Uh, mm -hmm. We always like to say that. But again, this is one of the reasons I love one of the things I love about this is it doesn't actually say the chosen on it. It's just it's kind of like the Nike swish. It's like just something simple, cool. Uh, and if enough people see this out in the wild, uh, they, they eventually start wondering what that represents. Um, but it's just a really cool, simple statement. And um, I love it. And it looks cool. It feels cool. It's good, it's good on you. Yeah, it's a really great hat. And uh, we'd already given some to our crew. So you might have seen uh, some, some crew watching it. But uh, the new hat at thechosengifts.com. I'm sure that Colin has already put up that website. Uh, if he hasn't, he will be fired soon. But uh, it is <laughs> www.thechosengifts.com. And here's what's funny. She's here. She won't sing the jingle, no, not. even though she is I'm actually a singer and uh, <laughs> has, uh, has done it, has traveled singing and under, <sighs> comes from a singing family. But I haven't traveled singing that. Yeah, that is true. So uh, thechosengifts.com is where you can get uh, the new shirt and the new hat. All right. We're also going to cover some uh, three... Uh, Pretty significant issues and questions uh, that you've had. Uh, we're not going to talk about this much after tonight. Um, I know even uh, we've heard from occasionally a few people who've just said, uh, can you not cover this in the live stream? I'm tired of it. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to hear about it anymore. Here's the thing. Not everyone has experienced what you have. You might have already been on social media and heard all of this, but we've got some of our family members in the Chosen family who are just now coming to the party when it comes to these topics uh, who might not have heard about it and are, but are, or, or those who are hearing things and are hearing them inaccurately. And so we really do want to provide some final clarity on all of that stuff. We've also got an amazing new video for you. It is the heart of season three. Uh, that is so cool. It's a 
documentary, for lack of a better term, so good. about the heart of the show, about it's like really behind the scenes, like more so than even our normal weekly behind the scenes. Uh, this gets you really deep into the making of the show of season three. And uh, you'll hear from our actors, what they were thinking and feeling during some of these scenes. So do not miss it. We're going to show you that tonight. It is the debut of the season three documentary. And then I'm also going to then as, as answer some of your questions. Because even after we explain a lot of things, no doubt you will still have some <laughs> questions because we've seen that in the last 10 days. We'll yeah. say something really uh, we'll say something that we think is clear and then... Yeah, we're saying the thing and then it's... And someone will go, but what about that thing? And we'll go, I thought we said things. that, but let's... More things, let's right? keep yeah. saying some things. This is a family. <laughs> this is a family chat. <laughs> yeah, Even okay. though you might be new, to, uh, this might be your first live stream. Uh, this is a chosen family. We've always been transparent and authentic and uh, or at least tried to be as much as possible. And we're happy to talk about these topics and consider them important. So uh, a couple things I want to say first uh, before we let Amanda go. Because uh, she's not going to be here for the whole live stream because she's a normal human being <laughs> who doesn't want to talk for uh, a long time. Um, but uh, we want you to keep two things in mind as we go through these three pretty significant topics. The topics that we're going to cover. Um, well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say that yet. Uh, you might, might already know them, but I want to talk about the things that I want you to keep in mind. So number one is uh, I go to a church here in uh, Midlothian, Texas. And one of my pastors, Jimmy, gave me this quote that he'd gotten from one of his professors. And uh, he said, we owe our opponents, or for lack of a better term, anyone that we're in a disagreement with, uh, we owe our opponents three kindnesses when in an argument or a dispute. Number one, uh, that we would do the work to understand their position. Now, again, I haven't gotten to agreement. I'm talking about the work to understand it. That is the first kindness we give someone when in any kind of disagreement or potential dispute. Probably now, being slow to speak, right? That's yeah, yeah. Where that's coming but, but, from. Well, and we're gonna, and if we do, or if we do speak, it's to ask, right? What exactly, exactly do you mean? Yeah. Number two, that we would work to understand their position so well that we can actually sympathize with it. Again, that doesn't mean agree with it. It just means I at least understand your position so well that if asked to share it or repeat it, I could do so. And uh, so that I can actually sympathize with where you are coming from, even if I don't share the uh, position or agreement. Now, again, I'm not talking about any of the particular issues we're going to be discussing. I'm talking about in general, the, even the discussion itself, as you listen to us tonight, uh, and as we in the chat, our team is in the chat, as we listen to you, uh, our, our first two kindnesses are to understand first and then seek to actually be able to sympathize with it, then the third kindness is to disagree with them in light of those things. Disagreement is not um, wrong, of course, obviously. In fact, it should be happening all the time because uh, we're around people all the time who hold positions where, that are different from us. So I want you to ask yourself as we go through this, do I do that in my life? Like, am I good at that? Am I good at making it's sure? A huge challenge for me in marriage. That's where my first application came is am I listening to you when I disagree with you? Am I processing what you're saying? Am I, can I actually articulate what you would say, how you, you know, what you're saying before yeah. I actually launch, because I launch as you're, a human, I'm a launcher, like, and it's not, it's, it hasn't been great. Yeah. And because, and because it happens <laughs> that, to be my, my kryptonite is being, you know, like, like being understood as my yeah. obsession, whether I'm agreed with or not. Yeah. And so, so know, if I launch too quickly and you I'm tend to be a, you tend to be a, a, a quick, quick trigger. And I tend to be like, let me make sure the safety's off. Let me make sure that <laughs> it's loaded. Let me make sure that, yeah. and it, that, that I'm actually aiming properly. Yeah. And that was uh, helpful for me in marriage and then, yeah, and, and, in life in life. And yeah. especially on social media, can you remember to first seek to understand before you then make a comment because these comments are public. And so when you're saying something about someone and you're asserting things about them and you're accusing them of things or you're disagreeing with uh, them on things, and if you're saying something inaccurate, uh, certainly that would be a problem. We don't care about disagreement. Um, Amanda and I are, we, we knew going into this, uh, we're going to make a Jesus show. We're going to try to get it out to the world. Uh, we're going to do it so that no one ever disagrees with anything that we say. <laughs> Not something we decided. Uh, yeah. We welcome it. We have no problem with it in, it in our life. We're surrounded by people who are unimpressed by the show, unimpressed by our ambitions, and are free and uh, more than willing to tell us when they believe we're wrong. And we welcome that because it makes us better. Uh, so one, the, that's, that's the first thing. The second thing that I want you to keep in mind is a quote mm, or yeah. a, uh, a note that we actually got a couple days ago. And this is uh, the reason it's important for you to keep this in mind is because we always want to keep the main thing the main thing. 
So I asked you to read this. I think uh, you've read the first few sentences. You haven't even read the whole thing yet. But just uh, go ahead and read this note that uh, we got in our inbox um, a couple days ago. It was in this episode where I broke down crying more than usual. She's referring to the season finale of season three. It's episode eight, the walking on water and feeding the 5,000. It was in this episode where I broke down more than usual. Trapped in a pet sin, I saw myself drowning like Peter. That's when I saw Jesus's hand entering the sea. There I paused the series and cried. I sobbed, asking the Lord to save me like he saved Peter because I was drowning and couldn't swim. I quickly took my eyes off Jesus, and the sea took me to the bottom. But there, along with Peter, I also saw the hand of the Lord in the mess. The Lord calmed my sea and took me out of the midst of the waves. I feel that I am no longer in that danger. I feel free and saved, and now I'm going to run into Jesus' arms and beg. I'm sorry. Not like Peter, although I longed for it, but through confession. What a magnificent job you do, God bless. If there are wrong punctuations or words, I'm sorry. I speak Portuguese and I know very little English. So I translated the text through Google. LOL. (laughs) I wonder what LOL is in Portuguese. (laughs) Um, Here's why I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, Not because it changes anything about any disagreements we might have, but I want you to know what our heart is and why we do this. We do this because of that. And the reason that you've donated to the show, if you have, or that you've paid forward or that you've paid for tickets or whatever, is uh, allowed us to get the show out to the world. It's allowed us to translate it into different languages. And so uh, this person um, was able to see the show in their own language. And that is our goal. That is our aim. That's why we do this. And these issues that are outside of the content of the show, outside of the release of the show into the world, um, they are issues that we can disagree on and that's okay. But you need to know that no matter what, our primary focus is that. That is our primary goal. So tonight we are willing to talk about some of these issues, but we're not going to spend a ton of time after tonight on them. You might hear me uh, with press a couple times because I'm sure we'll still be getting questions, but um, that's our obsession. Well, and even in, I'll say even in the midst of this week, you're trying to shoot season four, there were times where we would have to say it to each other, like, you got to focus on the work. You got to right. hand to plow right now. Right. Um, so that that is our heart. And we keep each other in that space. Right. So I just want you to keep those two things in mind as we discuss some of these issues uh, that um, regardless of the non-content related issues or who distributes the show or who plays a role, because those are the topics we're discussing tonight. We're discussing the pride flag that showed up on the set of uh, the show and in one of our BTS videos. Uh, We're going to be talking about who's distributing the show because we made a deal with Lionsgate, a big Hollywood studio. And then uh, we're also, we have a new actor playing one of the roles And um, regardless of any of those things, um, the content and the approach does not change. Uh, We are on a rock, not on uh, the rock. We're on the rock. We're not on sand. And so uh, even as we discuss these issues, the pride flag, the new distribution deal with Lionsgate, big Hollywood studio, and the new actor playing Philip, those things don't change. Our goals don't change. And that impact is not uh, uh, not changed. The the impact that, that, that they had um, has nothing to do with uh, the things that we're some with the things we're discussing tonight. Other than the fact that maybe I'm not saying that perfectly r- really well, but what I mean is uh, that happens regardless, and sometimes uh, uh, because of uh, the distribution that we do. But it is not happening. That impact is not happening uh, connected to the, the most of the issues that we're going to be discussing tonight. Does that make sense? Or did yeah. I say that poorly? No, you said it. And I, um, are you sure that you don't have more content that you want to cover? Because it's feeling like it's a little light on content tonight. <laughs> <laughs> a little light on content. Yeah. Yeah. You sure I don't have more <laughs> issues to discuss? No more. To, you know more you want to cover? Yeah. Yeah. No, we're going right. to uh, cover. So, um, so with that, I'm going to let you go. Yeah. Because you don't need to sit here the entire time. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, w- w- one other quick thing. Details about all of this. If you if you aren't aware yet, if you haven't seen the video, I released a video on our YouTube page, Facebook page, mm-hmm. Twitter, all that stuff. Um uh, getting into details of uh, the issue that's come up in the last week and a half. You can hear our heart on the matter. Um, she wasn't in the video, but I talked about our approach to all of this, our approach to our workspace, our approach to how we uh, 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 how we approach all of our hiring and um, what we what we 
allow people to say or not say on social media. Uh, so anyway, just wanted to make sure you check that video out. It is on our uh, YouTube page and all of that. Um, so please, I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to repeat everything that I said there. So please make sure that you go uh, check that out uh, to get all the details on where we stand and our heart behind the show and how we started the show and why and all of that. All the Great. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. Love you. Love you. I'm going to shift to the middle. All right. Um, so first of all, I also want to acknowledge some of the fair questions and concerns that you have expressed because, uh, I don't want to just say, and, and I haven't just said, uh, all of you are saying crazy things about us and all of you are lying about us and all of you have dumb positions on this. Uh, there are some who I feel that way about, but that is the minority, a vocal minority. Um, but most of you, uh, in fact, I would say that this applies to the vast, vast, vast majority of you who do have some questions or concerns are fair. Um, cause I think you, it's fair for you to say, um, I thought, you know, you don't take stances on lots of issues. I thought that you don't get into politics and you don't get into some of these specific issues um, that aren't necessarily covered in the content itself of the show. I thought you guys let the show speak for itself. You always say that. Um, and, you know, you. I know that you say, Dallas, that the cast and crew personally can say and do whatever uh, that we don't as a show or as a company get involved in these in some of these conversations, some of the public discourse that I believe is better relegated to relationship and to my dinner table than it is uh, social media. And uh, it seemed on the surface, when you first saw these stories coming out, it seemed on the surface like we were breaking from that. Um, you were also thinking when we, you know, when you heard about the Lionsgate uh, deal, I thought you guys were outside the system. I thought you weren't going Hollywood. I thought you weren't going to sell out. Uh, I thought, you, you know, why, why do we still need to uh, contribute to the show if now you have a big Hollywood deal? Uh, the actors, why are you changing actors? I, I love these actors. You know, I, why are things changing? And I get those fair questions and I get those concerns and uh, we'll address them tonight. But I just wanted to say, I, I acknowledge that uh, the, the, the vast majority of you have uh, brought this up in a fair and, and way, way and have some genuine concerns and questions, and we welcome that. Um, but as we talk through it, just remember the importance of understanding first and then disagreeing. Okay, so quick understanding uh, of the whole uh, pride flag issue. That's the first one that comes up. Even when we mentioned that we were going to be discussing this in the live stream, some of you didn't even know what was going on. And you're like, pride flag? What are you talking about? Okay, so here is what happened. These are the facts, okay? So about a month and a half ago, we finished the uh, a behind the scenes video like any other behind the scenes video. We released it, uh, what was it, two weeks ago? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, actually, two, two, two Sundays ago. And... Uh, in the corner of the screen, uh, you saw a three-inch pride flag that was on one of our crew members' personal equipment. Uh, we did not intentionally put that on our video because, again, we, we as a show are not making stances like that and don't get involved in those waters. But uh, And, of course, we didn't see it. It's tiny. In fact, most of the videos that you've seen about it, if you've seen any, have to actually enlarge it just so that you can notice it because uh, overwhelmingly people didn't notice it and we certainly didn't notice it. Um, and if we had, I'm not exactly sure what would have changed, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but that's not the, 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 so that's what happened is the video came out and someone noticed it. A few people noticed it and uh, started asking questions about it. And, uh, it happened to be on one of our crew members, personal equipment. As I mentioned, uh, this is one of our favorite crew members. Actually, he does an incredible job, uh, on the show. And, uh, and then what started to happen was, um, the comments about it weren't just, Hey, what's going on here? Um, it escalated. And when we responded, um, to, to be fair, our response was a bit uh, of an unfortunate one just because it was kind of boilerplate. It was the response we typically give when asked about uh, the beliefs of our cast and crew members. We've made it very clear from the beginning that uh, we hire people ba- not based on uh, any religious or political litmus test. Uh, it's based on can they do the job well. And so we kind of gave that response and it was a bit tone deaf in relation to the nuance of the issue. And so people started not just disagreeing with us, but they started actually attacking individuals. So first they were going after the crew member saying that he did it on purpose and they were using terms like disgusting and agenda. And he was trying to start a controversy and trying to hurt the show. Uh, they went after the editor of uh, the video, the guy who filmed it, uh, who's actually sitting three feet from me. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk more about him in just a minute too, uh, that he was doing it on purpose, that he had an agenda. And of course they went after the show, went after me, which is fine. 
Um, and what then escalated even further was that a couple of our actors who were quite upset by some of the comments being made specifically about this crew member, uh, they uh, pushed back and they said, if you don't, uh, if you're going to make those kinds of comments, if you're going to attack him, then, uh, you know, you don't need to watch the show. And one of them even said, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Now, to be clear, and I'm going to mention this later as well, they, they were not talking to you. They were not talking to our fans in general. They were not talking to those who just have a disagreement about Pride Flag or a disagreement with our decision to, uh, to not police that uh, with our cast and crew. Um, they were not talking to people who just had fair questions or who have disagreements. They were talking specifically to those who were uh, personally attacking him, being specific, showing his pictures and, say, and, and, and pointing out, you know, calling for him to be fired, specifically multiple people, multiple people calling for him to be fired, making a lot of assertions about what he was thinking, and uh, they pushed back hard on that, as they should have. And uh, so then I released a statement, uh, which, again, you can watch on our social media channels. Uh, the summary of it is, again, that we don't have a litmus test for who we hire, um, a religious or political litmus test, and we do allow, We made uh, Amanda and I made that decision years ago, that we are going to allow people on their own personal equipment, because most of our team is independent contractors, so on their own personal equipment or what they wear um, and on their own social media pages, we just aren't going to police it. I've seen it done before. It's done uh, throughout a lot of my upbringing, and uh, uh, I don't like it. I don't like it, uh, and I certainly don't like it, and I think you don't like it when it's when when the situation is reversed, and you as a Christian wants to wear like a Jesus Save shirt or a crucifix or some hat uh, that's supporting your political candidate, and you're told not to because it's triggering or because it's uh, disrupting and uh, or problematic or offensive, and uh, you don't like that very much, and I th and I agree. I think it's unfair. I think it's unnecessary, and I believe we can all. Uh, I, th I believe that. Uh, on our set, at least, we're going to allow people to do that from whatever uh, belief that they want to express uh, personally, as long as it is not disruptive to the set. So sink or swim, uh, right or wrong, uh, agree or disagree, um, we have decided that the content of the show speaks for itself. And that's a, kind of the, a little bit of the gist of the statement that I made. Following that, uh, just to be clear, the actors who had made some of those comments did apologize for how it came across to some people. They did clarify their position specifically. They expl explicitly said uh, that we were not talking to uh, anyone who just disagrees or anyone who just has an issue with uh, the statement that was made or the flag being in the, uh, on this guy's equipment. Uh, we were speaking solely to those who were making very personal and extremely uh, problematic comments about him and to him. And I'm telling you, there were a lot of those. And uh, they were standing by their brother. Uh, they were standing by someone who works extraordinarily hard, who's a phenomenal crew member. And when someone's saying, you should fire him, uh, our actors are going to, uh, and several of our crew are going to push back on that. That's who they were referring to. But they apologized for how it came across. They apologized uh, and clarified exactly what they meant. And things have uh, just continued to escalate. So just to be clear, again, because I know some of you in the comments right now are saying, don't worry about this stuff and don't let it get you down and please keep going. And of course, that's going to happen. Um, Amanda and I slept fine last night. When your uh, foundation is built on the rock and not sand uh, and your decisions are not based on reactions, uh, you can still sleep like a baby. And I'm sure right now Amanda is... You sleep like a princess. Yeah, Amanda said I sleep like a princess because, uh, yeah, I have to have the Little room. eye masks. Sometimes I wear an eye mask. Yes, I can't. Yes, it needs to be very dark. It needs to be cold in the room. I actually have a weighted blanket that's cooled by a machine. I'm like Princess in the Pea, if you've ever read that book. Uh, so, Amanda, thank you for your contribution yeah. to the conversation. So, um, here's something I wanted to point out. So, that that's what happened. But here's the kinds of things that you end up seeing. And these are the kinds of things that are posted online. I want you to put, uh, Colin, if you could put that up right now. This is a thumbnail uh, one of several that were like this, but this is a th this is a sample thumbnail of how the issue is presented. You see me actually being quoted. It's like the, the 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 quote bubble out of my mouth saying "I approve," and I'm literally photoshopped holding the pride flag myself. And then there's the picture of Jonathan as Jesus right above it, and it's this collage, and it's making the statement. And and, and I don't I don't know what the title of this video was, but there were lots of them like "Chosen Waves Flag" and. Uh, these kinds of headlines and these kinds of images, they're out there. And so then you see that and you go, now hopefully if you look close enough, you can see it's obviously Photoshopped, but you see that and you go, 
he said that? He did that? Well, that's different. And whether you agree with me or not, whether you agree with the image or not, you're going, huh, I didn't know the chosen did that kind of stuff. I didn't know Dallas. And so it's confusing and it's upsetting to some of you. And I can understand that, of course. But that's what's up there. And that's what people see. And that's going to be up there for a long time. I also want to just give a sampling real quick of some of the comments um, that get. So like we posted that we're doing the live stream. And I said, here's what we're going to talk about. And you're, we're going to answer your questions. And we're going to address this. And here's just the reason, and I would normally would not read some of these negative comments, except they're literally one right after another. They're together. So this is the sequence of comments you get. So Jake wants to say, he's all about the money. And if he wants his show to continue making it, he'll have to serve his new master, Hollywood. That's his comment. Now, the next comment would typically be like, we love the show and thanks, can't wait to see you in the live stream. But the next comment is right from Judy. Right, and I hate to see it. So again, decision made, Mind read, conclusion drawn. Follow-up comment. It really is sad. His dismissive attitude concerning the folks who made the show as popular as it is is alarming. He calls them noise. Again, no, I didn't. I said that there are strangers who are doing noise, uh, like the comments that I was referring to earlier, and I have to focus on the work instead of paying attention to that. He says, we are in a culture war. His embracing of this behavior tells me exactly where he stands. Embracing tells me exactly where he stands. Uh, and then another follow-up comment. The Bible has full of, is full of these stories. How many started out right and then fell from grace was my biggest fear. His ideas got so grand he has to compromise to pay for it. Lack of faith, I suppose. Again, these are all public public comments. And then she starts talking about the money that we've spent on the show and on, on the, the, the sets. See a lot of things show up and I think, hmm, where did the money for that come from? I'm not sure that that is how people meant for you to spend the money. Right, all these comments, unaware of, the fact that on our live streams and I communicate with you constantly, uh, you know, about where the money goes and what we're doing. We, we, we literally show you everything. Someone else follows up. Next comment. I was wondering when this thing would get so big that it would become more about money and fame than it is about spreading God's word and loaves and fish. Sharon responds to that comment. Agreed. I knew it was too good to be true. Then here's, then there's this one. The camera person intentionally shot the pride flag to get his point across. I've already heard Dallas's interview. This is talking about my comments. Sorry, it's lame. Um, and then uh, someone follows up to that. Yeah, for profit funded by our dollars. It's pathetic and doesn't deserve our money. Okay. Now, again, people have the right to disagree. But those are the comments that our actors were responding to or getting bothered by. Those are the comments that can be confusing for people and that can be, that can be toxic and can get this to escalate more than it should. If people would have just said, uh, I don't think you should allow this, or I disagree with this, please explain, uh, no one would have batted an eye. But then calling for his firing, posting pictures of him and using all those terms, and then the kinds of comments and, and, and uh, thumbnails that are out there um, where they're mind reading and making assertions and conclusions publicly, that's the kind of stuff that, again, personally doesn't bother me because personally uh, I, have, I get my strength from someone else. Uh, and I don't uh, care about um, people who praise me too much or uh, criticize me too much. Um, it's not my motivation. But it is sad that uh, so many of you end up getting confused or seeing comments like this, and those comments last for a long time. There are literally over a million views right now, well over a million views if you combine all the videos on YouTube, from people not just questioning our decision-making, which is fine, but literally questioning our faith, calling us dangerous, harmful, uh, some of them making downright false claims about our intentions or about what's in our heads. And those videos, like I said, are going to be up forever. And do you think that they're going to take them down or add the clarity that we've given or the statements that I've made? Are they going to bring that to the table? Are they going to, in the comments section, go, okay, there's what The Chosen responded with or here's what Dallas said. Uh, do, do you think that they're going to adjust anything uh, to their statements after uh, I responded, uh, after the actors apologized um, and clarified their comments? Are they going to add that to their truth? You know, they're, they're claiming that they're standing for truth and all this. Are they going to give, the, give, give both sides? Maybe a, a small portion of them will. But years from now, five, ten years from now, people will still be seeing that, and that's their only context, and they'll be seeing that as though it's pre presented as though it's fact. Forever. Um, Chris Durbin, come, come here for just a second. So this is Durbin. Uh, many of you know him. And... Uh, Normally, I'll, uh, normally I'd have you stick around for, for longer, but this is just, I'll keep this relatively brief because I don't want to put you too much on the spot. But um, he's been accused. He's the one who did the video. 
And uh, I want to make it very clear. Normally, we're we. Like I say, when I say we put out a video, I don't specify names typically uh, because we don't blame anyone in particular and we're a team and we all approve things. We all do things together. We all stand together. But people are mentioning him specifically and saying the editor intentionally caused controversy, intentionally has an agenda, intentionally trying to hurt the show. There's a face to that when you say things like that. Uh, Durbin. Yes. Hi there. Hi. Was this intentional? Not at all. No, no. <laughs> um, did you uh, see it and then go, uh, you know what? I'm just going to kind of, I could edit it out, but I don't want to because I want to get things going. Nope. Right. So Durbin loves, first of all, you you also love the crew member that we're talking about. Oh, yeah. You, you yeah. know him well. You love the show, love the cast and crew. He's one of our most valued employees. Does a great job all the time. All these videos that he makes. Uh, and our team, Colin, who's uh, doing the live stream right now, we have a great BTS team. You're not the only one, obviously. Uh, but... <laughs> Those BTS videos that we give, there are hundreds of hours uh, yes. that you've seen, thousands of hours that we've filmed that he's editing through, combing through, all of that stuff. And uh, what do you think of the – what are the chances of now and in the next several years that every single video you do is going to uh, be completely drama-free and have no issues that will, uh, people will have whatsoever and is exactly, exactly turned out how you intended it to turn out? I'm sure there's probably going to be some more drama somewhere. Down yeah, the it's line. a zero so percent much, chance yeah. that you're going yeah. to do it exactly uh, how you intended, and that there are going to not going to be some things that uh, you might have chosen to do, to do differently. Um, but here's my point in bringing him out: um, is is not to like I, I said to him yesterday. I said, "Do you mind if I mention you um, in this?" And he said, "Yes." Or, no, you said you don't mind. I said I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because again, it's not that I'm trying to say you need to know this is the guy who did it. No, no, we did it. We release the video. But I'm saying he, uh, when you, when, when, when you say the editor did this and, and read the minds and make the accusations forever, uh, th those comments will be out on social media and forever. Some people will think, uh, because that's all they'll see and they won't watch this live stream and they won't hear the clarity and they won't obviously get to know him. Uh, and so I want you to know that, that when you're making comments about anybody, it's not just us, but you're making any kind of social media comments, that there's a face to that and to cert first seek understanding before you publicly uh, make some sort of comment about, of, of disagreement. Yeah. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Now he's going to go back to helping do the live stream. Um, but those, the, the, the thumbnail that I showed you, the comments that I read you, the headlines, um, in five years, someone will still be seeing those and saying, oh, chosen, wave the pride flag, uh, and, and all the other controversies that you've heard. Dallas is a Mormon, and yada, yada, yada. Dallas said this. Uh, th those, th th that's what uh, it gets put out there, even when it's not true. And um, also, forever, people will uh, hear that our actors told that told, said to any fans that disagree on the pride flag, shouldn't watch our show, when they didn't actually say that. And uh, so... They're going to, but they're going to see that and they're not going to take the time to see the clarity. They're not going to take the time to nuance what they actually said, even if they disagree with what they said. They're not going to say, okay, they were speaking to specific people. They didn't actually make those blanket comments, but that's what they'll hear and that's what they'll believe. So I just want you to think for a second, like imagine if, if the content you made, um, so we make content, not only the show, 56 episodes of television, literally thousands of social, social media posts uh, every year, thousands um, imagine if you, that was your, your task, bringing content to the world and that literally the majority of people watching it are watching for like thumbs up, thumbs down, this, I like this, I didn't like that. Uh, oh, I just saw something I don't agree with. That's it. I'm done. I'm done watching. Oh, I'm done supporting um, based on what could be seconds out of the thousands of hours, based on uh, a sentence out of what could be hundreds of thousands of sentences written. Now, again, that's not to minimize some of the disagreements. I'm just saying that it is a very, very challenging thing that I hope that you can understand that uh, in the course of, of, of the many years of us doing this content, um, there's going to be many people who either take it wrong or take it right but still disagree. And that's a lot to, to think about. And we just made a decision early on. We're not going to spend all of our time worrying about how it's going to come across. We're going to spend our time making sure that we're as authentic as possible and we're going to do the best that we can. And we ask that you trust God, not me. And uh, that's that's what we're hoping for. Um, so even right now in the chat, right now, I can see some of the comments right now. Uh, it's people still not quite listening, 
still saying things that aren't true, still saying things that they've heard as opposed to actually understanding. It's happening as we speak. And uh, I hope we're called to more. I hope we're called to better. And uh, I want you to also, before I move on, uh, just I, I know I know this is taking time, but I know that but this is these are important issues, and we're going to get to everything else soon. Um, but I do want you to think about this as well. Our cast and crew on our project, particularly those who don't necessarily agree with me on things, or maybe even necessarily agree with the show on things, they know who we are. They know who I am. They know where we stand. They know who what I stand on. And you got to understand that some of their friends and family are probably uncomfortable with the fact that they're involved in a Jesus show. Jesus, the, the most not only influential and impactful, but also controversial figure in the history of the world. That's a show based on the Bible, one of the most impactful, well, the most impactful and influential and controversial books ever written. And we're doing posts every day about Jesus and about the Bible and coming from a perspective that some of them might not necessarily align with in their personal lives. And in every post we make, Almost every post we make, they're going to see comments that are confrontational about liberals, Catholics, Mormons, unbelievers, people who don't believe or have different, uh, different uh, faiths, many of whom are represented by our cast and crew. And many of the comments, angry, name-calling. Think about our Bible studies and devotional books. Those take a position. Those get into detail, of course, about the Bible and where we stand on things. And imagine the actors and cast and crew getting this gig, loving the project, The project blows up, gets very successful. Suddenly, they're not only portraying Jesus followers for a living. Suddenly, millions of people around the world and tens of thousands of people on social media are following them and reading their posts and reading us, and they're expecting them to be like them. And they, yes, they get immense love and thanks from our fans. And, you know, the vast majority are wonderful, and and they know that, and they love our fans, and they appreciate being on this show. And the work that we do, they're very, very proud of. But they also get tons of messages asking about their personal faith, asking them to talk about things that they might not have wanted to talk about that are unrelated to their work. Thousands of comments expressing disapproval of their choices from how they dress to who they vote for, all in the name of, you're supposed to represent a Jesus show. Again, most of it is awesome, but some of it is that. And it's not just, hey, I disagree with you on this. Let's talk about it. It's attacking. And yet the cast and crew stay on this project that they know comes from perhaps a different perspective than they hold personally, and they contribute mightily to it. They work their tails off for the show and for you. And that's awesome. And I'm not sure all of us would necessarily do that. Would you work that hard for a show or business led by people that had different beliefs than you and was broadcasting those beliefs every, uh, to, to the world every day? It's a fair question. And I think uh, they deserve our respect and our thanks for being willing to work so hard for a show that has a message as strong as our show does. So when people were saying that this person should be fired or accusing him of trying to hurt the show, yes, our actors responded harshly and defended their friend and coworker. They've clarified it. We've clarified it. And now you can respond accordingly and disagree if you'd like, but you do need to understand some of the nuance and background behind it. So to be clear, just to summarize this particular issue, nothing's changed. Our beliefs haven't changed. The content of the show hasn't changed. If you're still wanting more details on all of that, please go watch my video released uh, earlier this week. You can check it out. All right. Whew. All right. That was a long one. Thank you for your patience. Uh, got a little bit more to cover. Now on to Lionsgate, big Hollywood studio. You've seen the headlines. You've heard the responses to it. Here is the truth. Uh, Lionsgate is a big Hollywood studio. Yes, they are a distribution company. And uh, we have entered into an agreement with them that they are the exclusive third-party distributor of The Chosen. Here's what that means. We still obviously are doing our content. Uh, Content doesn't change. I'll get into that in a second. But uh, as you know, uh, the content outside of our app uh, goes to other places as well. Seasons 1 and 2 are currently available on Amazon, Peacock. Uh, Season 1 is on Netflix. Uh, First three seasons are on Angel. Excuse me. And um, you're going to see our content in places beyond just the chosen app. And Lionsgate is now uh, the distributor responsible for getting it out to the majority of those third parties. So they're the ones who are going to be making the deals with 
uh, Angel and no, not sorry, not Angel. Angel's the, the exception to that. So Angel and the Chosen app are obviously where the show uh, starts first when you first see it. I'll get into that in just a second. So, but they're the ones who uh, make the deals with Amazon and uh, Netflix and broadcasters and all of that. And I'll get into that in a second as well. But they are our new third party distributor. And uh, I want to make sure that you are clarified on what some of these terms mean. Now, a distributor is someone who gets content to other platforms. So that doesn't mean that they're necessarily the platform themselves. So there's not like a Lionsgate platform that's showing the show. Lionsgate is getting the show, uh, the chosen out to these third parties. Then there are terms that you hear like platforms, like I just mentioned, broadcasters, theaters, all of that. That includes places like Amazon and Angel Studios. That includes uh, like the, the theater chains. That includes television networks. Those networks, those platforms sometimes generate their own content, but other times get their content from a distributor. And Lionsgate is our distributor, and those are the platforms. We, The Chosen Inc., we're the production company. We make the show. We make the content. We provide the content to our distribution and, uh, partners and our platforms. And as you know, uh, as I mentioned tonight, the show is free, available on our platform, because we're also a platform in addition to being the production company. Are you taking notes? Because I know this is can be complicated. But we're also a platform in the sense that we have our own app. And so when the show comes out, it comes out on the Chosen app and the Angel app, free. And those are the two apps that it comes out first. And then after that, uh, you will oftentimes, and we'll be continuing to see the show in other places. Now, does that make sense? And some of the, the, the names of uh, this is how these di di distribu di distributors and platforms work. Lionsgate did not buy us. Lionsgate is not owning us. They have no uh, control over any of the content whatsoever. And, uh, but the, the question then becomes, well, Angel used to distribute, right? And they used to own and operate our app, uh, the, the, the chosen app. And of course, they helped originally launch the show. That's why you still see in the opening credits Angel Studios original. Obviously, the first question is, well, why the change? Fair question. In any dissolving of a relationship, there are often what you hear irreconcilable differences. And Angel and the Chosen had irreconcilable differences. There's no getting around that. Leaving that aside, this is the bottom line. No one is controlling our content. Angel never did. Lionsgate never will. It's one of the reasons why we uh, love Lionsgate as well as a new distribution partner. That never changes. But as the owners and caretakers of this content, we must decide who can achieve our objectives of getting this unchanging content to the world, uh, translating it in hundreds of languages, making it easy to access, the means to which people can contribute to the show and be involved. And uh, we must decide who can achieve those objectives and also manage the growth trajectory the show is on. And we believe that that was not Angel. And so here's what it will look like moving forward. Uh, Lionsgate has zero to do with our content, as in nothing, as in zero out of 100. Uh, they don't want to be. The show doesn't change. They love what we're doing. They don't want to change it. They can't change it. There's no way they could if they tried. And uh, they love the audience that we've been developing, and they know that we can do things that they can't do, and uh, they love the show and are thrilled with it and want to get it out to the world. It's the third parties that they can get it to. There are certain audiences that we can't get to. They have experience and connections that we don't have. They're an extraordinary company. Uh, we've we spent months and months and months getting to know them because obviously we take this very seriously and they do too. And so it is going to be a beautiful partnership and more people are going to see the show because of our relationship with Lionsgate. We're very excited about that. Another question you probably have, will the show always be free? Yes, as I've said many, many times, The Chosen will always be free. Yes, on The Chosen and Angel apps, no matter what and or no matter when that is, there's a thing called windowing where sometimes uh, like the show will come out in theaters first. And so if you want to watch it first, you'll have to see it in the theater and you might have to pay for it first. Uh, so that may be the case where certain sometimes it's available first um, in, a, in a way that you have to pay for it. But it will always eventually uh, be free to watch. We've promised that and we'll, of course, live up to that and everyone understands that. Here's an example right away that I want to give you and announce to you. you some of you may have already heard this of where some of this is playing out. Uh, the broadcast network, the CW, uh, you're, you've been a CW fan in the past. Smallville. Smallville. That's your obsession. One of your obsessions yes. uh, is Smallville. 
Uh, the CW is a great network run by, uh, they're, they're, they have a new president now, uh, who's a great, 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 great guy and a friend and a fan of the show. And they are going to be airing all three seasons of the chosen starting in July at some point. And, uh, that's one of the, one of the first, first fruits of, uh, of, of, of what we're doing, uh, what we're dealing with with Lionsgate. And, uh, we're really excited about that. New audiences are going to be able to see the show and access the show. You, of course, already have the show accessed on the app and you can watch it wherever you want. But here's what I want you to do. I'd love for you to also watch it on the CW. I'd love for you to thank the CW. Uh, I'd love for you to thank the sponsors of the show, whoever they will be, because we want to also be known for what we're for, not just what we're against. We want to be known to support the things uh, and the, and the uh, people that are doing good things and make sure that they hear from us when something is good. And we want to encourage them to continue to do that, to not only uh, support and broadcast The Chosen, but maybe other shows like it. So make sure that when that comes out, we'll make sure that we're giving you all the information. But uh, that's really exciting is our broadcast TV, uh, uh, the first three seasons getting their premiere on The CW coming up soon. So that's another example of something that's really great because of this uh, relationship. All right. Third topic, uh, New Philip. Uh, as some of you know, uh, Yoshi, who played Philip for uh, the previous two seasons, is no longer with us. Uh, we chose to let him go. But as we said earlier, the show is bigger than any one of us. And uh, the new actor playing Philip, name is Reza. He is wonderful and he is going to fit right in, already has. Uh, just even in the last couple of days. And um, I wanted to introduce you to him. I know that you're going to like him and his performance. And uh, actually, Durbin had a conversation with him on the set with the purpose of introducing you to him. So let's go to that video right now. A whole lot coming for you after that video. I know we've gone through some, some uh, nuanced, challenging topics, but we've got some fun stuff coming up right after this. So just, this is, uh, this is about a two minutes or so. Yeah, conversation that Durbin had with Reza. Here's Reza, your new Philip. Right here we have Reza Diaco. And Reza is gonna be Philip. So <laughs> welcome to the cast as Philip, dude. Thank you. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about uh, that moment. You got the call, you're gonna be Philip. Well, the moment it was really, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about the moment. I was, I was in bed and suddenly I got a call from my agent and uh, I nearly had a heart attack, and uh, then I celebrated for a very long time afterwards. So, and you've been trying to get on the show for years. Like, what does that mean? Like, did you audition for other roles? I auditioned or? for other roles, yes. Much, many, so many of them. I think you were telling me earlier, Philip actually was one of your favorite characters. He was, yeah. I mean, because in so many ways, it's very similar to me, uh, being a, living a nomadic life. I lived in four different countries, and so kind of being a bit of a person who's lived various different lives and showing up and uh, living a life of value and faith and and yeah and feeling a little offbeat and misunderstood but still kind of stumbling along. <laughs> How excited are you for cameras to roll on your take as Philip? Extremely. I'm confused a little because it's difficult to you know fill in the wonderful footsteps of the previous Philip, um, <laughs> but I am very excited to kind of, uh, I've had discussions with the director and I'm very excited to bring my own uh, take to the wonderful character Philip, which I feel very close to personally. I've always been moving towards working on projects like this and this particular one with the message it gives about faith, but also about humanity is very, very important to me. And I, I'd like to go on a personal spiritual journey as much as I, I go through the process of serving the characters. Well, Reza, thank you so much. We're super excited to have you. Season four, right Season here. Four. All right, love Reza. Um, already doing a great job for us. And uh, he of course, brings his own unique approach to the character. I told him right off the bat, we're not trying to just you know, replace, uh, we're trying to just continue uh, the role of Philip uh, and what he brings to it. So. I have confidence that you are going to welcome him to the family, make him feel part of it, and uh, that you're going to love his portrayal. Uh, so we've got a few more things to cover. Uh, fun things, good things. Uh, this is all great. Uh, remember, the uh, My Rabbi Walks on Water shirt at thechosengifts.com. I remember this. I mean, remembering this even now. I believe in a God who walks on water. I follow a rabbi who walks on water. And uh, keep that in mind all the time. It's a reminder to myself and to whoever sees it. And of course, the new against the current hat, just the three fish, hashtag be the teal fish. 
be willing to go against the current and uh, follow Jesus as uh, we show in the opening credits. So love this hat. I don't always look good in hats. This is one of the few. What do you think? I like that one on you. She likes that one on me. That's all that matters. All right. Um, one thing I want to talk about briefly, we're going to get into, of course, our season three video, which is fantastic. I got some good news I want to give you. We're going to take your questions uh, coming up. But uh, first things first, in the, well, actually like seventh things seventh, because this is not the first thing we're talking about. Uh, in the app right now are our Bible roundtables. The first five Bible roundtables of season three are out there in case you hadn't heard about it. Uh, every season we do a Bible roundtable discussion about each episode. So it's me along with our New Testament scholar, Dr. Huffman, our Messianic Jewish rabbi, Jason, and our Catholic priest, uh, Father David, who we talk about uh, each of the episodes, we go deep into the historical and biblical and religious context. Uh, we talk about things in areas we even disagree on. Uh, we talk about the things we got right, a couple things we got wrong. Uh, we want to give you the opportunity to dive deeper into the episode, and they are fantastic. They always get a great response. People have been really eager about them this season and loving them already. Uh, just so many people have been appreciating the first five. And the fifth one came out today. It is out now exclusively in the Chosen app. You can't see this anywhere else. Uh, this is only in the Chosen app. So make sure that you look, if you don't have the Chosen app, you search for the Chosen. It's completely free, completely easy. You will have it downloaded to your phone or to your uh, Apple TV, Roku, uh, what else, Fire Stick, um, uh, within moments, and you can watch these Bible roundtables. They're really cool. And uh, we chose this clip. I want to show you this brief clip just to give you an example of what they're like and to also show modeling of good disagreement. We disagree on this issue, an issue that's actually extremely controversial for a lot of people from episode three of season three, but uh, we had a good discussion about it. Here's an excerpt of that. Check it out right now. Well, the the touchy subject that, that we dance into a little bit is when Jesus references James and Jude. So he says, no James and Jude, huh? Now, uh, there are varying degrees of interpretation over whether Jesus had siblings or not. So here's what I understand, and I'd love for you to help uh, clear it up. Our portrayal is James and Jude for sure existed. Whether they were his cousins or his brothers, there's there's no doubt that they existed and that they weren't fans of Jesus' ministry initially. Eventually, they became pillars of the church, but initially they were uh, skeptical or resistant to it. Give us a little bit of a, in, in, in the short amount of time, solve all of the theological, <laughs> theological discussion from the Catholic Church about Mary or siblings. You have 10 minutes to go. I don't know if I can solve every <laughs> issue, but the, the Catholic Church would definitely hold in what we would say the perpetual virginity of Mary. Right. That is that she didn't have, that she and Joseph didn't have relations and they didn't have children right. after Jesus. Right. And that um, in part is supported because of a, you know, a tradition that goes back to apostolic times. But in part, it's to recognize the particular um, purpose and call that Mary had that was so specific to Jesus that it's um, that that other children or other kinds of things would have would have been something that take would take away from the mission that she had to be the mother of Jesus and all that went with that and and all that she was. There's there's a notion that Mary was probably present for much of Jesus' ministry, mm -hmm. um, as you portray in the in the chosen, but maybe even even more in Capernaum. But um, I thought you handled it very well. It is scriptural. And another way that people have tried to think about it would be that there were other children in the home, in the household, but that weren't even Mary and Joseph's orphans. You know, extended mm -hmm. family that had come to live there because their parents had died, or. Uh, or you know, were away for some reason, but most Catholics would, would be would be really uncomfortable with the idea of Jesus having siblings by Mary and Joseph, and right. that hasn't been the teachings of the Catholic Church. Right. Yeah, the, the Protestant reading of those passages in the Gospels um, would tend to take them at face value. You know, hey Jesus, Mary and your brothers are out here mm -hmm. wanting to talk to you. And then it's Jesus who takes that word brothers and expands it. Well, no, the people who are listening to me, those, these people are my, my brothers and my mother and my sisters. And mm -hmm. so the Protestant takes you know, this report about his mother being right. his literal mother mm -hmm. and his brothers being his literal siblings right. um, and letting Jesus do the expansion. And then the, the passage that you reference in Matthew 13 um, 
where the names of Jesus' brother, isn't this Jesus whose, mother, whose brothers are with mm-hmm. us? Right. And uh, there's actually four that yeah, are named James. there, um, and uh, James and, and Jude are among them. Um, so yeah, the Protestants are just satisfied with taking that all at the face value of, uh, of those terms. Love those conversations. I uh, love those men. Uh, wonderful, wonderful men. And uh, I'm telling you, check out those Bible Roundtables. They're exclusively in the app. You can't see them anywhere else. If you don't have the chosen app, make sure that you download it to your phone or your Roku, Apple TV, or Fire Stick. You can be, it, it takes less than a minute, and you can be watching those Roundtables. You can hear that whole discussion. It's really, really cool. Got some good news for you. Uh, the Come and See Foundation, again, they are our nonprofit partners in that uh, the Come and See Foundation uh, was founded to uh, as a nonprofit ministry with their mission is to spread the mission of the chosen. And to be very clear, I'm not in case I wasn't clear about this earlier, um, the Chosen Inc., the company that makes the show, we are a for-profit company. We are not a nonprofit. We are not a ministry. We are not a church. Uh, that's one of the things that I really make sure I, I was clear on in the video that I did earlier this week. Um, and uh, the Come and See Foundation allows you to donate uh, to the mission of the show. And then they contribute to make sure that we are getting the show uh, produced and distributed and uh, tra- languages translated, all of that really cool stuff. And uh, 70,000 of you have generously donated to the Come and See Foundation. Colin, you go ahead and put up the, the website just in case anyone tonight, I don't know if t- tonight might be a night where uh, you're like, eh, I'm just going to listen. Uh, but if you do want to see a season four uh, completed and you want to see all the future seasons uh, done and you want to see the show get translated into hundreds of languages and spread throughout the the known universe, uh, you can continue to donate to the Come and See Foundation. It's comeandseefoundation.org. But good news, because 70,000 of you have donated to the Come and See Foundation, we are close to season four being fully funded. And uh, to ensure our goal of being fully funded by the end of the filming of season four, there are actually a couple of families who have agreed to match every dollar contributed to the Come and See Foundation. So if you contribute 10 bucks, they're going to match it. And that is going to hypercharge uh, our race to get a uh, season four fully financed before it's even done filming. And uh, I can't tell you how much it means. Um, we get so many comments uh, from people who have been impacted and changed by your donation. And uh, it uh, matters. It makes a huge difference and uh, it makes the show uh, able to be done and gets our gets the message of the show out to the world. So thank you for that. But I just want to give you that good news. Season four is almost fully funded. And also there is going to be matching uh, from these families to get us to our goal even quicker. So all the issues we've discussed tonight, I know uh, several of you are done. You don't want to talk about it anymore. But for those of you who do want to talk about it a little more, have some clarifying questions. We've been getting some of those questions. I'm going to be answering them at the end of the video you are about to watch. This is such a great video. I'm so happy about this. This should get you back on track with the joy and the fun of the show. We're going to take you deeper into the making of it, into the heart of it. You're going to hear from cast. You're going to hear from crew. You're going to see uh, behind the scenes footage you have not seen yet. Um, You're going to hear a couple conversations on set that you have not heard yet. Really, really fun stuff. I can't wait for you to see it. And so let's make that wait over. Watch it right now and stay tuned afterwards. The most important thing that The Chosen is trying to do is to see what does a life with God mean at ground level. I was actually really shocked that The Chosen wrote something so realistic. All these big scenes, these epic moments, these scripture moments, aren't just stories on a page. They actually have meaning and truth that God is trying to communicate to us. The feeding of the 5,000 was one of the most surreal moments I've ever experienced as an actor. We'll remember every second of it. It's, it's, I think that's how, that's what I mean by unique. Um, Cause every experience we go through in life is unique, but this is, this was something else. It was like the first time I actually saw what this show, like you're seeing the impact of this show. I think, you know, the scene that he and I have is probably one of the most personally effective and potent scenes in the entire series. Not just the season, but the series. Each of these individuals has given up their life 
this is not a job. This is like a, a, a change, a paradigm shift. That the world will not be the same after this. This this show is it's raw and it's real. So I think the ultimate point of the season is to show that until we actually come to him, that's the only way we're truly going to find rest. We are living right now thousands and thousands of other people's dreams. To be able to work, to be able to do movies, shows, especially this show, and there's literally tens and tens of millions of people who are going to watch the work that you guys do, so let's be grateful. You're all here for a reason, and uh, it's because you're going to make the show better, so thank you very much. We are now officially a, a three-season show. Season three is for sure when um, everything that we've been building towards escalates. So now we know our characters, we've established who's who, good and bad, uh, and now it's time for everything that we've assembled, uh, both the, the people and the, the stakes, uh, now they're escalating because the pressure is escalating. We're getting closer, like, Jesus' actions have more and more consequences, not only for his enemies, but for his friends and his followers. The, the honeymoon phase is, is over for all of the apostles, where, you know, the excitement that was it, there for, you know, following Jesus and, and going on this journey has started to wear off a bit. All of them are kind of on their own journeys of figuring out where their place is in this group. We've been in the position of being students, and now we're being promoted essentially to do these teachings and with that comes a lot of risk involved. I think the best part about this season is even though the spectacle is bigger, the, the sets are bigger, there's new characters, there's the stakes are way, way higher, The Chosen has still kept that same heart that they've had since season one. Everyone knows that the story is going somewhere and we all know where it's going. Um, but if there's something that's unique about the show is the, the perspective and the lens that we take each season. So when he does a miracle now, the word spreads faster, uh, which brings good things like more people coming. It also brings bad things, more people coming. A lot of people coming to the city makes the Romans upset, makes the Pharisees upset, um, also causes the disciples to question, what's going on here? What, where, what is my place in all of this? So everything's just escalated in season three. That's the biggest thing. Uh, but I think more than anything else, some of our key characters in season three are outright questioning. If you're the Messiah, which I do believe, why isn't my life then? He sent us to ask you if you are really the one who is to come. Or should we look for someone else? And I think, that's a, I think that's a fair question because the Jews at that time were so excited for the Messiah to come because when the Messiah comes, the oppression, the pain, the questions, the doubts that we've been facing for so many years, for centuries, for millennia, crying out, come rescue us, come rescue us. Now he's finally here. Why doesn't it feel like we're being rescued? Why are the Romans still oppressing us? Why am I still handicapped? Why is my marriage struggling? And them struggling to deal with what his true kingdom actually was and what the Messiah was really here to do, uh, I think is a question that was asked 2,000 years ago and I think it's still asked today. And I think that's what season three really explores even more than any other season. They're still excited and passionate about what they're doing, but all of them are kind of on their own journeys of figuring out where their place is in this group, uh, purpose is, what they have to offer. Maybe they're having some doubt. Okay. So lately you've just been able to follow him around everywhere and he's, he's been your security blanket. So when he says, I'm choosing you as my apostles, which as you say, you know what that means. It's like a, oh, we're, you're sending me to go be the governor of Illinois. I thought I was gonna stay in Washington, DC. You know. They're, they're starting to deal with the realities of following Jesus in you know, the first century when uh, that was not a popular choice. It, the word is starting to get out, the movement is starting to spread. Each of these individuals has given up their life. If I asked you, hey, drop all this, go, you'd have to really think about it. And then, what would your family think? 
And if you're married, what would your wife think? You can go on and on with these questions, right? And the only thing, and my character says it in season two, sometimes I'm just following. I don't really understand. And I think that we're seeing the, the beauty in that statement and also the very real ramifications of uh, following the spirit, right? And then dealing with the world as you once knew it versus where you are now. That to me is... And you'll see there, there are characters that go through some very real stuff. I'm sending you out in every direction, two by two, specifically to our people only. So when Jesus calls the disciples together after the sermon to then send them out two at a time, I think what we're really excited to see is the disciples taking all that they've learned up to that point and then applying it but having to really, to really anchor themselves in their faith in Jesus, that they can do the things he's asking them to do, that they can teach, that they can heal, that they can cast out demons, stuff that they've never done before. Really as much physicality as you can, but that was a lot better. So yeah, great, really nice. Yeah, and, um, and when you run to her too, like if you wanna Hold her face longer. take her face longer, yeah. Okay. You know, like you're like you're looking at her eyes right. for the first time. They've been they've been you know cloudy white. Now they're beautiful. You know, uh, we can prepare for something, but when it comes to the time and the moment to actually do it, uh, tons of doubt creeps in, and you you start thinking, Am I worthy of this? Am I am I able to do this kind of thing? Uh, we're, we're not with Jesus in the in these moments. We're we're literally going out there trying to teach, trying to spread the word and to spread this connection to anybody who, who needs to hear it. But some of the disciples I think are like, wait, I, I thought I wanted this and I thought I was ready for this and now the moments come and I'm panicking. You will cast out demons. You will cl What? Why are you all looking at me like that? Uh... Could, could you just repeat that one more time? <laughs> one scene that stuck out to me when I was reading at first and is the scene right before we go out two by two and the disciples have all gathered and they're about to go into Matthew's home and Simon brings them in together and kind of looks everyone in, in their eyes and, and the weight of what they're about to do and, and the risk that they're about to do, the risk of of death uh, falls on everyone. Back then, no one could talk to each other uh, when they were apart. There was no way of communicating like that quickly to check up on each other. This is not a job. This is like a, a, a change, a paradigm shift, that the world will not be the same after this. Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that season three is bigger than the first two seasons. I just think it's because it's on a bigger stage, meaning more people are involved now, more people know. In, in season one, the, the situation with the disciples was similar to our situation making the show. In season one, we were tiny, you know, f few people knew about us. The disciples and Jesus, uh, the ministry was getting to started, it was similar. They had, they had little money, they had little exposure, um, and that, that has both benefits and challenges. Now by season three, so many people are involved, so many people know uh, that the emotions are heightened. The women will stay here in Capernaum. They will help support the ministry financially. So with, with the women, they, they take the reins in season three. So the guys are going out two by two and they're spreading the word, but the women are making sure that the ministry can stay afloat. The people following Jesus were probably very poor. Um, and if not, they, you know, they have to be now in order to follow Jesus. They have to give up everything they have. So the idea of us financing it means that we have to work hard at figuring out how to do something. So they're there figuring out how, from a business standpoint, that we can make sure that not only we can eat, but we can like continue to fund this ministry. That's a, that's a, that's like CEO stuff. If the trees are bad, then why are we doing this? It's within the budget we set. We're going to make the best of it. Mm, it's exciting, isn't it? And we go into the details of how we do that. We take one gift from one wealthy woman and we, we multiply it. We, we put it to use 
and start a business, an oil making, an olive oil business, and um, and start financing the thing, <laughs> which is, um, I, it was a, a detail in the Bible I forgot about. And I was like, oh, this is, yes, this is, this is what they wrote about back then. <laughs> this is what we're doing. We shouldn't be feeling like we are um, secondary players or bench warmers in the story of Christ because that's not how it actually was. And so putting us at the forefront and making sure that we're important and doing things that, that I'm sure at that time would seem just, you have women following you? You're telling me women are among his followers? You have women funding you? That's, um, that's gonna rub some people the wrong way. They're realistic characters. I've never seen that in any sort of Bible show. <laughs> um, but I think it's so fitting because Jesus treated women with the same respect and care as he did with men. So then why, I mean, why hasn't he healed you? The little James and Jesus have a moment in season three that is hinted at in season two when little James is talking about his limp, his difficulty, he's telling Thomas about it. It comes back up in season three because Jesus announces, apropos of nothing, to the group that you're gonna do the stuff that I do and you're going to heal the lame and all this stuff. And little James is like, oh, what? <laughs> Hold on, question, <laughs> um, what does that mean for me? The first thing that made me cry was the scene where little James speaks to Jesus about the fact that he hasn't been healed yet and um, the insecurities that he has uh, with himself physically and uh, also the insecurities when it comes to his dynamic in the group and what he has to offer. And that was something that was so personal to me and there's a few lines in particular, like one of them is, uh, I know how easy it is to say that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know how easy it is to say the Song of David, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, but it doesn't make this any easier. And in this group, it doesn't make me feel like any less of a burden. Jesus's answer to little James is basically that uh, you, you're not going to be healed in this life, um, but that's because I trust you. And little James actually heals someone. And he, uh, it's, it's a really incredible moment for him where I think that shows him his, his true purpose. And he realizes how he can use his situation and his differences to help and inspire others. Yeah, because it's important because it's like not everyone's capable of that. Gotcha. They couldn't if they tried, but you. How many people do you think the Father and I trust with this? How does that not instill a sense of hope and joy? Like Jordan is on a TV show playing a guy with a disability who's healing and Jordan himself is dealing with these circumstances. I think, you know, the scene that he and I have is, is probably one of the most personally effective and potent scenes in the entire series. Not just the season, but the series. And I think God is gonna use this season and this scene and this relationship to bring a level of hope and encouragement to so many people that see it that are desperate for it. You were acting like I did something wrong. I had no idea what was going on. I was taking advice from a Roman. What did I do wrong? You didn't do anything. What? You did nothing. I think Simon and Eden's relationship in season three definitely goes through a little bit of a roller coaster because um, we're really excited that he's back. I'm very excited that he's back and I get to spend some time with him. And then, you know, he's gotta go out again so soon. So I think that that obviously creates some, a little bit of loneliness, a little maybe resentment and, you know, not, not to the fact where she regrets that he went to follow Jesus. That's not it at all. I think that it's, it's we're human, right? We, we miss our, our spouses when, when they're not there. Um, and so when he comes back, you know, things, things change, you know, especially when there's time apart and you can't always update. I think Simon comes home to 
a different Eden and he can't quite figure out what's wrong, but he also doesn't quite know how to communicate well. Everything else though, mm -hmm. like give him even more. Give, okay. Just okay. come at him. Okay, guys. Like just okay. point, whatever, but just give him, okay. throw some punches, okay. you know what I mean? Okay. Come in harder, come in louder. Okay. Anytime we sit down, and figure out what are gonna be the tentpole moments to populate our, a given season. Um, it's easy, but um, we needed a storyline. We, we needed glue. We needed some through line that the emotion of those events could piggyback on. What did these big moments mean in reflected in the lives of one of our characters? And we thought we had a handle on something, um, but it was, our story editor, Maisha Goslin, said bluntly, what if we take on a miscarriage? And, and at first, you know, you've got three guys in the room and we're like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the person to handle that. I don't know who the person to handle that is. This is a, this is a, a, a subject that so many people have experienced and so little conversation is had out in the open about. I was actually really shocked that The Chosen wrote something so realistic and so raw and, um, and brutal, uh, the reality of a miscarriage. And I can't even imagine the reality of a miscarriage during that time period. And, you know, like, I, like I've said, like this, this show is, it's raw and it's real. And most biblical shows are not showing the, the realities of women's problems and, and the emotional pain of, of losing a child. We're not sugarcoating what Eden is going through. We're really showing um, a lot of, you know, the pain that she's feeling, the loneliness and the confusion and losing hope a lot of times. That's important because that's what people really do go through. Taking on this material head on is the big swing that The Chosen is taking. It's, it's, it's the critical thing that comes from taking this lens on Jesus, is we get the opportunity to stay true to the material, absolutely true to the letter of the Gospels, but explore it as surrogates as observers to show the Gospels from this side of that fence, which has been electrified before. It's been a no touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't imagine. The most important thing that The Chosen is trying to do is to see what does a life with God mean at ground level. It was hard to read because when you go through something, a loss, so traumatic, and then to see, you know, someone be healed just by touching his fabric, let alone like knowing what Eden went through with the loss of a baby, that was hard. We see Simon and Eden's life take this left turn. Um, and we don't know till, till later on in the season. And I think it comes as much of a shock to the audience as it does to Simon himself. I think he deals with it the way anybody, any human would deal with it, with grief and sorrow and loss. And then couple that with the fact that your, your buddy is the Messiah. And Simon is kind of thinking, well, you can do all these miracles, Jesus, why can't you save my kid? He's thinking in that moment, oh, what could I have done to help? Maybe I could have asked Jesus in advance, could I have been a better person? Eden's just like, I need someone to just love me. That's kind of what leads to the strained relationship in my opinion. And in this moment, it kind of just all comes out. And Simon doesn't even know how to compute that strained relationship. And uh, John kind of sees that explosion in front of him. Simon? I trusted Jesus. Of course you do. Wait, 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 trusted? I trusted that Eden would be okay. Safe while we were gone. And uh, 
it immediately, it's, it's the character that we kind of want to see. I think everyone, every question I get asked about John is the beloved disciple, the loving one. We see that in that moment, he can go from extreme for John's own torment to, I've got you, don't worry. I'll, I'll make sure that this is okay for you. What happened at the Decapolis? Our teaching. We made a mess. We did not intentionally create a mess. These pairings are really, really interesting and Philip and I go off um, and that storyline carries throughout the season of what are the repercussions of going in and preaching uh, the word of Jesus in, before they had heard it. And we get thrown out. <laughs> and then we, we really do think that's that. You know, we've helped prepare the way. He'll be going there later. Um, but we, we hear not long afterwards that our preaching in the area has caused almost an uprising and civil unrest and violence even. So then we have to wrestle with, did we fail? What was shocking to me, and The Chosen's really good at doing this, is uh, they took Philip and sort of flipped him on his head. Um, and Dallas and Ryan and Tyler love uh, doing that to us and to the audience is sort of uh, establishing um, the strengths of a character and then um, showing that they're humans and they're flawed. Yeah, so, yeah. Like it's just got to, you guys got to practically be on top of each other the whole time because the next scene we see you is you guys are coming into the home and you're still, you know, urgent and energized and frustrated and he's like, oh, he's in a mood right now. So just resist the urge to, to end the scene with kind of a quiet, you, know, mm -hmm. you got you to maintain that like, pissed off and frustrated and you should be too, mm -hmm. so that the scene still has that yeah, no, really energy good. going into the, mm -hmm. so going into the next scene. Philip's journey this season is seeing what he caused and then looking himself in the mirror and saying, whoa. I am not even close to being a preacher. Like, I, I'm, I'm, who, what have I, I've been preparing my whole life for this, and I can't succeed. I'm a failure. There are many different groups within the city, different religious groups, different belief systems, and they all are coming to a head because of these words that we preached when we went on our mission. The Jews understood you to mean that Jesus was calling for Gentiles, and the Gentiles thought you were calling them second class. And then the conservatives, who lived by Jeremiah, would have heard you saying that the original guests who didn't want to go to the banquet would miss the party. And those, better verse in Isaiah, behold, I am doing a new thing, were probably emboldened, except that Gentiles were there. Yeah, that's about right. How did you know that? Then the questions of trying to go back and fix it until ultimately, you know, we understand that we, Philip and I, can't fix it and that we need Jesus to, to come to the area. And that sets off the chain of events that leads us into the end of the season. <laughs> oh, I, I don't understand this. But that's good. Look. Oh. Our company's logo is Loaves and Fish. I happen to be wearing a hoodie that has fish on it. The, the, the origin story of The Chosen is uh, how my wife Amanda and my lives were changed by the story of the Feeding the 5,000. It's part of our DNA. So when I'm actually out on that field and we're seeing it come together and we're seeing the thousands of people come in, it's like, oh my goodness, we now actually have a chance to recreate something that happened 2,000 years ago that I actually believe happened. But not only that, we get a chance to potentially deliver some of the lessons of that story that we may have gotten lost in reading it hundreds of times. All these big scenes, these epic moments, these scripture moments, aren't just stories on a page. They actually have meaning and truth that God is trying to communicate to us. It seems like it's about time to actually film the feeding of the 5,000. <laughs> The 
first, uh, there was there was my reaction that I could not hide behind the character of Judas. It was Luke's reaction of just seeing this amount, this this immense amount of people. When I was directed to go out into the crowd, I was absolutely terrified. It was hot. That's basically what it was. It was so hot. Those two weeks that we were filming the lead up to the feeding of the 5,000 and then the actual feeding, um, whew, man, it was like the Chosen's Lollapalooza or something. It was really felt like such a special event that we got to be a part of. It's going to translate to the screen in a way that nothing's been done like that before. You have so many people from all around the world that wanted to be there and so many people that I got to meet and love the story and, and got to tell me how they were affected by it. 20 years from now, 40 years from now, if we're still here, uh, we'll be able to tell the same story to our kids and be like, that one day we were, you know, there was like more than five, there was more than 12,000 people of us. In between takes, we got the chance to like actually have conversations with kids that were out there. There were kids that were like under 10 years old out there. That were like, that loved the show. We'll remember every second of it. This was something else. So rewarding just to see how many people just came just to be a part of that moment. It was like the first time I actually saw the impact of this show. And man, that love that we got was just, I can never forget that. It was, it cemented in my brain just the amount of like, they were so happy to see us on stage. And The feeding of the 5,000 was one of the most surreal moments I've ever experienced as an actor. That was the first time I had seen that many people in one place. And uh, being there though, and seeing actually 5,000 plus people stretched out over this field was crazy. It, it made our job so much easier. two years, I was telling fans, and I was also telling our team, we're not doing the walking on water scene. The main reason I wasn't going to do it was, I'm always concerned about scenes that are so special effects heavy, so visual effects heavy, that even, in, even if they turn out great, the audience is watching it, not fully engaged in the emotion of the scene, not fully engaged in the characters, but wondering how we did it. Well, as we started to plot things out, it started to feel inevitable. It started to be like, we're setting up Simon in a way that he needs to have a confrontation with Jesus. He needs to express the faith and doubt that he's experiencing at the same time. And what exactly that looks like, boy, that walking on water scene really would be an amazing way to do that. So there is Simon on the water with Jesus. And he's crying out to him and, and, and basically saying, why did you let this happen? Why? Then why are you upset? Why are you chasing after Gentiles when your own people have problems right here? When your own person has problems? And Jesus tells him because they prove the genuineness of your faith. Throughout season three, we have Jesus and God doing incredible, amazing things, right? We're healing left and right, but some feel like they're left out. And in the end, I think that all of that healing, all of the hope that we long for comes together in different storylines. So when, you know, what Simon is struggling with and how he's he's feeling betrayed almost by Jesus, um, and then realizing that he, he needs him more than anything, right? To, especially at the end, like, all I'm thinking about is is when he's his his mantra that he chants, you know. Please, please don't let me go. Don't let me go. I think simultaneously, as Eden is in the water, and Simon is in the water, Simon has this physical, literal physical encounter and touch by God, where he pulls him out of the water where Eden is in the water looking for a touch by God to spiritually cleanse her and heal her. And 
he meets her there and because she's there in prayer and she's there in in full just knowing that he will be there in a sense working with the cast of the chosen has been the greatest privilege of my career so far either as an actor or even as a crew person for the you know 20 plus years i've been involved in the industry i've never seen a camaraderie uh, between a cast and crew and cast amongst themselves like this anywhere from day one it was like love 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 i was like what is this <laughs> i'm a little nervous like you're actually having a conversation with me and these are not just co-workers to me this is truly a family um i love these guys like crazy there's no egos on this set whether it be from cast or whether whether it be from crew it's it's fun that we also push each other sometimes we whenever we're in like a down slope or having some trouble with a scene you can always trust that you can turn to your fellow castmate and they'll be like hey Try this, or are you feeling all right? No, no worries, you got this, you got this. And they'll have your back 110%. There's a sisterhood forming on set that um, that we're helping each other even through, you know, talking about the scenes or talking about the emotions from the scenes. I don't think any of us expected the bond that would come from, um, from working together on The Chosen. First of all, my ladies, I love, <laughs> love the girls so much. And then the guys, they just all feel like my brothers. And we are really, really genuinely, like, we look out for each other. Every time I come back to set, it, it feels like we're turning back home, like you've been gone for a while. And now you're coming back home. It's not just the actors, it's also um, the cast and crew. I can confidently say that, that this group within the cast and crew are, you know, some of my best friends in the world. and. Uh, we, we talk all throughout hiatus whenever we're not filming. I honestly am, am just so grateful to, to be a part of this group. You hear Jesus at, at episode eight, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I think you hear that and go, gosh, it took until the season finale for us to, to, to kind of see what all of this is about and what Jesus is promising, because he's allowed all of this to happen. You see the disciples often throughout the scene, season asking, you know, where's Jesus right now? Or why doesn't he fix this? And I think you also see throughout the season that Jesus does sometimes allow us to get weary and heavy laden. He allows us to get hungry. He allows us to doubt. He doesn't start each day by solving all of our problems so that we can spend the rest of the day worshiping him and being so grateful that Jesus made everything uh, better uh, here on this earth each day. So I think the ultimate point of the season is to show that until we actually come to him, even when it's difficult, even when it doesn't mean that the oppression is going to go away, that's the only way we're truly going to find rest. It's getting us onto a new plan, onto a new economy of time, uh, onto a new idea of what uh, rest and joy actually truly mean on an eternal perspective. And I know it's been long, I know it's been a rough season at times, but uh, it's going to be extraordinarily rewarding for tens of millions of people, and I hope it's also going to be rewarding for you. That's a cut on that scene. That's a wrap on the season. Thank you so much. I love you. All right, my microphone is shifted right now, which you probably can't hear me quite as well because I wanted to make sure you saw my shirt. My rabbi walks on water. You can get that at uh, uh, thechosengifts.com. But wasn't that video cool? Uh, I thought it was. I uh, loved watching it. My t uh, the, the BTS team put that together. Chris Ong did uh, the majority of the work on this one, but he was working with footage that was captured by many people, and a lot of people inputted it, uh, inputted into that, capturing the interviews and all that discussion. So thanks to our cast and crew for contributing to that. But man, uh, that's a really healthy reminder, I think, of why we do what we do and what the impact is and what it means. So uh, anyway, what I would like to do now, and you are free to go if you do not want to talk at all anymore about the conversations and discussions that we've had earlier, but uh, I want to take uh, some of the questions. They've been coming in throughout the live stream. They were coming in through the week, and uh, I want to go ahead and bring some of those up right now. So the first question comes from uh, someone who is named Kimmy Queen, and uh, here is, I'm going to assume it's a she, 
uh, if that's a real name. This is the, the questions. Once you had VC money to do season three, why did you make it sound like sound you did not have the money and ask for people to give money? You made great profits from season three and have sweet distribution deals. Why are you still asking for money? What about the lawsuits? And are you going to talk about the underhanded ways the Chosen Corp was formed? <laughs> How can I get all my money back? <laughs> okay, well, let's do this one thing at a time. And uh, I want to make sure that I'm... I, forgive me, I'm going I'm to be I'm gonna be careful in my words because a lot of this uh, matters. Uh, very, very... Uh, it's very important, so I want to make sure I say this properly. So, first of all, VC money is referring to venture capital money. Uh, and when she says, what, once you had VC money, do season three. Okay, so make it very clear. The Chosen Inc. does not have VC money. She's referring to Angel Studios. Angel Studios got a uh, from a VC an investment... Um, into Angel Studios. They are a for-profit company, and good for them. They got a very large, it was public knowledge, uh, investment into their company. And uh, it says, why did you make it sound you did not have the money and asked for people to give you money? So to be very clear, Angel Studios is not the chosen ink. They got an investment. We didn't. Uh, we're both for-profit companies, but they got that big investment. They, Angel Studios does a lot more than just the chosen. Okay, so the investment was into their company, Great, good for them, and uh, they, they've, they're, they're, the Angel app has other projects and other shows on it, and uh, they're doing some good work, and they've got a future, and that's what they're doing right now, okay? They got an investment. It has nothing to do with the Chosen Inc. Uh, so why did you make it sound you did not have the money? Well, so season three, when we were fundraising for season three and now fundraising for season four, I want to make, it sure, make sure you understand, the, the, make sure you understand. The show is free. So... Even when we were with Angel Studios and they had the model, what's called pay it forward. Pay it forward was the optional payment. It was the opportunity for you to pay for the show, even though you didn't have to. And so just because they got an investment in their company doesn't mean that the show itself, the seasons of the show itself, still don't need financing. And certainly the Chosen Inc., especially now that we are no longer partnered with Angel, that is a separate thing. When we ask people for money, we are essentially saying it's free. You don't have to pay for it. But if you do want to contribute, here's how you can. The uh, budgets of our seasons are very high relative to Hollywood. They're actually quite low, but compared to, you know, life, they are very high. And they're, the, sh the show is expensive and we have to pay for the production. And so we still need uh, contributions to that effect because the show is free. She then says, says, and the reason I'm including this whole question is because this is really important. You made great profits from season three. Okay, she's referring again to Angel Studios. Angel Studios got that pay it forward money and then the Chosen Inc. gets a portion of that. And that portion then goes towards keeping our company going. Okay, so you have sweet distribution deals, just so you know, those distribution deals, at least so far, are, extreme, are actually quite low in comparison to the money that it uh, takes to make the show. Okay, so just when you see it in a distribution deal like on Amazon or Peacock or whatever, uh, at least referring to the first couple seasons, that makes up a fraction of, uh, of our overall spend. Uh, why, this is why are you still asking for money? I already answered that. Uh, lawsuits, I'm uh, not going to go get into that. Um, are you going, and there's, there's not lawsuits. Um, and are you going to talk about the underhanded ways the Chosen Corp was formed? That I honestly, I, I've got my president in the room Brad, do you even know what that's referring to? I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. I don't know if the uh, the chosen corporation is a public company. Uh, you can uh, we're, we're uh, um, what's the word qualified by the SEC. Uh, our documents are public. Uh, we have to we're audited twice a year. Uh, it's it's an extraordinarily complicated process uh, that is extremely transparent and uh, and oversought oversought oversight oversighted. Uh, so again, I genuinely don't know what underhanded ways the chosen corp was formed. We've been formed for several, many years. We have 19, uh, s a little over 16,000 investors, uh, who are all part of it. Uh, and can, how can I get all my money back? Don't know. <laughs> uh, you can't probably, um, but it sounds like you were, uh, paying it forward to angel studios. So you can reach out to them if you so like, I'm certain they will say, <laughs> uh, give the same answers that I gave. Uh, CIL asks, when did you become a for-profit public company? Who owns the company? When did you become a for-profit public company? We were that from the beginning, from day one. Um, 
And the reason that we even exist is because 16,000 investors, when we were crowdfunding, it was an investment. It was not a donation. It was an investment into a for-profit public company. Now, I fully understand that uh, there is a large amount of people who just didn't quite understand that. Uh, we made it extremely clear. It was in every single email. It's in every single live stream. But it's still, I understand, uh, not, not everyone. Um, when we talk about contributing, sometimes people can get confused. Uh, we've been very clear, but we recognize that, uh, again, not everyone watches all our live streams, but we have been a for-profit public company from day one. Who owns the company? Uh, it is a combination of myself and three other founders, uh, and along with 16,000 plus uh, other people who invested into the company. Uh, Hot Doc 007. I'm going to let that one slide. Uh, I'm going to guess that that, uh, is an, uh, that that handle is used for other purposes besides just commenting on YouTube. Uh, what I'm hearing is this production isn't to glorify God, but it's just a business for profit. Why then do you expect us to send our money to you? Uh, I don't expect you to do anything, um, So for, first of all. But um, these are the kinds of questions that uh, that I'm talking about when it comes to mind reading and all or nothing, now or never, assumptions being made. So what I'm hearing, so he's outright saying, what I'm hearing isn't what you're saying. I'm going to hear more than what you say. I'm going to hear subtext. I'm going to hear things that you're not saying. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to choose to make public that even though that's not what you said. This production isn't to glorify God, but it's just a business for profit, as though you, can, you can't do both. So, there are many businesses that uh, are for profit that also glorify God. There are many people, many businesses that glorify God that also happen to make a profit. So nothing that I've said is ever contradictory. My own personal mission, my own personal calling, uh, might, while it might not be shared by all of my cast and crew, it might not be shared by all of my partners, I know that going into it, but my own personal mission and calling uh, I make very transparent. Of course, we are to glorify God. I want to glorify God. I want to get this message of the authentic Jesus out to the world. But we are also a business. We also have investors. And we also have to pay for all of these things. And we also have to return what we want to. We don't have to. It's not. Uh, uh, we're not required by law to, but we certainly want to uh, have a return on investment to our investors. And uh, why then do you expect us to send your money? Uh, if you like the show... I always say this, if you love the show and it's meaningful to you, uh, then you are certainly free to contribute. If you don't want to contribute anything, you're welcome for the free show. And I'm not even saying that snarky. Uh, that's why we make it free. It's why people give. It's why people paid it forward back when we were with Angel. It's why people donate to the Come and See Foundation is because they want it to be free and you have the choice to contribute or not. Slim Diggler, got some interesting ones. Says, man, I'm lost. I thought this whole show was put together for believers. Seems to be for money. Am I wrong? Yes. Um, but again, it's that it's that either or. Um, and by the way, the show was never put together for believers. Um, the show is for everybody. And uh, our cast and crew aren't all believers, and our viewers aren't all believers. Uh, so uh, I want to make sure that's clear. John Macias uh, asks, didn't he make a video with a plea for contributions to assist him in making more Christian movies with a Christian content? Um, no, I did not. Um, if you did, then it seems to go against what he seen now. He said that they weren't a ministry. I beg to differ in his plea for money. Okay, again, these, these are the kind of terms we're talking about. I've never pled for money or made a plea. I point out the opportunity that you have to contribute to the show, and I point out the truth that if the show is free and no one contributes to it, the show will not exist. That doesn't mean that the show is a church or that our company is a ministry. I'm saying you can donate to the Come and See Foundation, which happens to be a ministry, happens to be a nonprofit, but our show, our for-profit company, uh, the, the, the Chosen Inc., of which I am um, the, I don't even know my title, Grand Poobah, Brad? <laughs> Chairman. chairman. I am the chairman of the, the, the Chosen Inc. That is a for-profit uh, company. But that doesn't mean that the show still, that when I say you can contribute to the show and here's how, uh, still doesn't need contributions uh, for it to continue. And when we're uh, offering you these opportunities to purchase uh, shirts and hats, we are a company. Uh, there are many other companies uh, but that are still going to say, look, if you want us to continue as a company, this is what's going to, uh, this is what's going to be required for that to continue. Um he made it sound as though he was a Christian ministry. Okay, I can't, I mean, I'm a Christian. 
Uh, the show has uh, has ministry uh, impact, um, uh, but yeah, uh, but I can't control how how things come across. Uh, he has made it clear that he's not. I will most likely not contribute into or watch the series anymore or anything that he produces. Go with God. Um, Brenda Labar says, I am an original investor and have a monthly contribution since that day. They were nonprofit and they were a Christian production then. It is so good to know that now that they are living off our dollars and raking it in that they are non-Christian. All right, let's be clear. First of all, Brenda, thank you for being an original investor. Um, the show exists uh, partially because of you. But again, investor, you invested into the show. You have actually had a return on your investment. Uh, I don't know if everyone knows this. This is public knowledge that all of our uh, 16,000 plus investors have received 120% of their investment back. Uh, I've made a monthly contribution since that day. Now her monthly contribution uh, probably initially was going to uh, Angel Studios um, and was in the form of pay it forward. That was not a nonprofit or uh, a, an investment. It was an uh, optional payment. So when she says they were nonprofit, we were never nonprofit, uh, and they were a Christian production then. Again, the term Christian production, as I said in my video earlier this week, the term Christian production, it can be a confusing term. Our show is Christian in the sense that, of course, it's about Christ. I am a strong evangelical Christian, unabashedly, unashamedly so. The show's perspective comes from my perspective of, I believe the Bible is true. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. I believe Jesus Christ is the, is the Savior of the world, that he died on, the, on your sins, and that he is the exclusive way to heaven. I believe that. So in that sense, the show is a Christian show. As a production, it is made up of a wide variety of people who come from many different backgrounds. Our equipment is not Christian. Some of the sets that we have used or some of the stages that we have filmed on or some of the location, some of the people that we have worked with, some of our vendors are not Christians. So as a production, it is not a Christian production. And that is an important distinction. And so that is what I was referring to. So to say they were a nonprofit, not true. They were a Christian production then. I'm not even sure what the term Christian production means. Um, and then now they're living off our dollars and raking it in. Again, I'm not going to respond to that, that they are non-Christian. All right. Uh, Fran McDaniel, his for-profit term used to describe the chosen business model, surprised me. Used to describe the chosen business model, surprised me. So why the continued crowdfunding and Preying on sympathies for donations. Okay. First part of the question is a fair question. If, we're, if you're a for-profit, uh, and that surprises you, that's fine. That's fine. Why the continued crowdfunding? Great question. Um, crowdfunding, again, doesn't necessarily mean donation, nonprofit ministry. Crowdfunding can also refer to for-profit companies. And the crowdfunding is the term that we're using simply because we're a free show. And so we don't, the vast majority of our money doesn't come from ticket sales or from uh, subscriptions or anything like that. It comes from you choosing to. So that's our business model. You, you, you may disagree with that, and that's fine, but we're very transparent about it. We're just saying you have the choice to pay for it or not pay for it. Uh, and then, but then, again, using these inflammatory terms, preying on sympathies. I, I don't think I've ever asked for sympathy. I don't think I've ever taken advantage of anybody. Uh, I've, I've been extraordinarily upfront, and if you've watched any of our live streams or read any of our emails, they're always, here's the facts, here's how we do it. We've always been very transparent, and I've said very, very clearly many times, if you cannot, don't. If you do not want to, don't. Uh, if you cannot afford to, if you're uncomfortable, do not. Um, so, again, let's try to avoid toxic and inflammatory terms. Regarding the pride flag, Common Sense asks, why didn't you edit the gay pride flag out? I've seen where you have spent hours having to edit some parts out. You should have edited that out. So as I mentioned before, um, again, we didn't know. Uh, and I, I, I made the comment, I'm like, if we would have known what we would have done, yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we, we have no interest in causing quote-unquote controversy. I don't think we caused it. I think some other people caused it. But let's just assume for the record that we did. Um, obviously, we, we prefer to focus on the content of the show and not get into all these uh, other side conversations. But once it was out there and once the, the video was out, uh, I thought it would, would, would have been, um, I don't know if the word is dishonest, to then go and uh, delete it out. And then all of the 
videos and comments that people are making about it, uh, pointing it out, and then they go to watch the video and it's not there. They're trying to make a decision for themselves. Um, I just I think, well, we're, you know, we, 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 we're not ashamed of the decision to hire cast and crew uh, who have different beliefs, um, and we're not, we, we don't want to shrink from this controversy or from this conversation. We're willing to have it. Uh, regarding the Hollywood uh, uh, Lionsgate uh, relationship, this is a question from Catherine. The people who funded you should get their money back. I mean, Lionsgate bought y'all, didn't they? Uh, so again, as I made it clear, Lionsgate did not buy us. They've not actually paid us for the rights to uh, distribute the show. Um, the money will come from some of those deals that are getting. Obviously, we'll get a portion of that. But to be clear, uh, Lionsgate didn't buy us. Crystal. If the show is not a ministry and just a TV show, then why the push to get it distributed worldwide and into 600 languages to reach people for Christ? And if it is not replacement of scripture, then why is your wife writing Bible studies and workbooks based on your show? Why is the show and supporting materials being promoted and sold in Christian stores such as Mardell? Okay, so what I think she's saying, and I don't read minds, but what she, I think it's pretty clear what she's saying here, which is you're saying it's not a ministry, but yet you keep also saying we wanted to get it to 600 languages to reach people for Christ. So that's true, of course. My own personal calling in ministry is to, I want to I want the whole world to have the opportunity to make a decision uh, for Jesus and uh, to, to have as much as possible uh, the Bible or to have this show uh, to see an authentic Jesus and to ultimately point them towards Scripture. And if they choose not to, that's up to them. But yes, that is my personal calling and mission. So that said... The show itself is still just a TV show. And the reason that I say that, I'm not saying that to diminish its importance or its impact, but also to say we're not scripture. I'm not the Bible. I'm not God. The chosen isn't the Bible. And Jonathan is not Jesus. Um, so, yes, we still are wanting it to get into 600 languages to reach people for Christ. We still want to get it distributed worldwide. But legally, we are not a ministry. And uh, also, just uh, emotionally speaking, the people involved in our show, not all of them have the same calling and mission that I do. So the show as a production uh, is not a quote-unquote ministry. Um, then she says, it's not replacement of Scripture. I mean, I, I, I would hope you would agree, Crystal, that we're not a replacement for Scripture. So maybe this was a poor wording. But why is your wife writing Bible studies and workbooks? Amanda, why are you writing Bible studies and workbooks? Um, because the Bible is Scripture. Because the Bible is Scripture. Yes, the Bible is Scripture. We want to focus on that and also give supplemental materials to point people even more to Scripture and to dive deeper. Uh, and the supporting materials being promoted and sold in Christian stores. Yeah, they're also in Walmart. They're also in plenty of stores uh, around the country. They're also on Amazon. Um, and that's a great thing. We want it to be seen by more people. All right, just a couple more questions. And again, you're free to leave at any point. I'm just, uh, if you care about some of these issues, want to see these questions answered. Michael says, so you're producing a show about the life of Jesus Christ and his disciples, but now you're walking back saying it's not a Christian production on Angel Studios. Really disappointed here. So this is similar to the previous question. We're not walking anything back. I use the term, and, and you wa please watch my video. I'm just begging you to watch it. He watched it, but obviously when I was giving the nuance of what I meant, doesn't want to focus on that, but I said, I actually talked about it. I'm like, I'm not sure what the term Christian production means. So I talked about that. I'm I'm, I acknowledge that the term is somewhat uh, nuanced, but um, yes, we are a show about the life of Jesus Christ and his disciples, but not everyone in the show shares my beliefs about who Jesus is. Not every viewer shares the beliefs about who Jesus is. Everyone has different reasons for doing the show, for working on the show. And um, so that means as a whole, the production itself, uh, it's, a, it's a company. It's a, it's a group of people. Um, and uh, I, I don't expect or demand that all of them fall under the banner of Christian. The content of the show speaks for itself. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Got just a couple more here. Oh, this is again about the, let's say, Vivian says, Dallas, you're confusing me. When Chosen was just starting and had an app and we had to donate to spread the word, you said Chosen was a ministry to spread the gospel without the effect of Hollywood. What are you now saying? Okay, so again, to be clear, I have, I, 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 it's possible I've used the term ministry to describe what I'm about or what I'm trying to do. I have never called the Chosen Inc. I have never called the show itself a ministry. Now, that's not, again, I want to be very clear. I'm not trying to diminish the impact or the importance of ministry. I'm simply saying that words matter. And uh, we are a for-profit company, a uh, an entertainment company that is making a show that is about the life of Jesus. Um, and when you said we, we had to donate to spread the word, again, up until recently, no one was donating. Donating refers to nonprofit. 
It was optional payment. That still is an option at, uh, at the Angel Studios app. And even through the Angel Studios app, there's options to donate to the Come and See Foundation. The Come and See Foundation, though, is a nonprofit. You can donate to them. Uh, and then talking about without the effect of Hollywood. Yeah, I never said that. So I just want to be clear. I've, I've always said that we are doing this outside the system because the Hollywood system at the time uh, was not interested in making this show. At least I don't think so. I mean, I, I didn't pitch it to all the Hollywood studios. But like cast, a lot of our cast and crew are from Hollywood. I worked, I, I, I did a lot of Hollywood productions. Um, and Hollywood choosing to distribute the show, they're not impacting the content, but yes, we'd love for them to get the show out to more people. So I, 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 I'm, I'm making that very clear and hopefully tonight cleared some of that up. Roy says, I have watched The Chosen since it came out when you could watch it for free. You still can watch it for free. Here's my confusion. You said it wouldn't cost nothing to watch. Um, I think he means that you said it would cost nothing. And to watch The Chosen. Yes, it still costs nothing to watch The Chosen. My thing is, why are you charging people $20 to watch the movie His Only Son? I didn't realize you'd gotten so money hungry. <laughs> Has God not blessed you when it was on the big screen and made more money than some of the Hollywood movies did? All right, lots to unpack here. I'll keep this brief. First of all, he's referring to Angel Studios. Angel Studios did the movie His Only Son. It's not a chosen project. It's an Angel Studios project. Uh, David uh, Helling, who made the movie, a friend of mine, actually, loved David and uh, supported the project. But His Only Son is not chosen. It's on Angel Studios exclusively. Uh, it has nothing, nothing to do with us other than the fact that I root for David. Okay. Uh, so uh, there will still be ways at times when The Chosen is released where you have to pay to see it in theaters or you have to pay to see it on a particular uh, app. The Chosen show itself, the seven seasons that we are currently making, will always be uh, available free on The Chosen and Angel apps. Didn't realize you had gotten so money hungry. Again, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. I, can, I don't personally care what Roy has to say about me. I don't know Roy. He doesn't know me. But here's why I'm telling you and why I'm hoping we can set an example for how we dialogue with people. Making assumptions, mind reading, drawing conclusions about people's motives. It is toxic. It is destructive. And it is certainly not Christian. And it is certainly not truthful when you're claiming to stand for truth. So you don't know what's in my head. And so when you guys make public comments like that, leave me out of it. When you're making public comments about people that I work with, it's destructive. And it's wrong. And you need to watch yourself and you need to repent, especially when you are bearing false witness, claiming that it's all in the name of truth. And that's what happens when you start making these comments about what's in your head. Oh, you know, you've gotten so money hungry. Again, I don't personally care what he says about me. I'm just talking about these comments, the societal discourse that we're, that we, especially as Christians who are supposed to be called to something better, are contributing to that toxicity. It's embarrassing. And uh, one quick thing, though, I do want to address, talking about it made more on the big screen than some of the Hollywood movies did. Uh, <laughs> so just to be clear about how the box office works, yes. Uh, the first two episodes of The Chosen came out in theaters, and they did around $15 million in theatrical box office. Just to be clear on that, that is a that is the catering budget for uh, some of the Marvel movies. But also, the theaters take at least half of that. And then the distributor, because we're not the distributor, takes a portion of that. And so we did not, quote-unquote, profit on the release, the theatrical release uh, of those episodes. Um, the money that we got goes towards, again, the production. It goes towards our company and all that kind of stuff. But it was... Uh, not as much money as you might think. Victoria, I find a couple things interesting in this Lionsgate thing. Dallas, uh, number one, Dallas said they broke with Angel Studios in December. But like many others, I was still making monthly donations. Okay, you weren't making donations to Angel Studios. Again, there's an important difference. You were paying it forward, optional payment. You were contributing to Angel Studios. Uh, I was still making monthly donations to Angel Studios. Is the show still receiving that funding? Um, I'll just answer that first question uh, right now. So um, those monthly contributions you were making to Angel, the Pay It Forward, um, uh, if you are still making monthly contributions, we do get a portion of that. When you are making Pay It Forward contributions to the Chosen through the Angel app, yes, we do get still get a portion of that. When you pay it forward to other projects, obviously that none of that goes to the Chosen. If it's not a big deal, why has Lionsgate been washed from Dallas and the Chosen's pages? Uh, it hasn't. Um, we haven't made big uh, announcement about that ourselves because we want to talk about it on this live stream. Um, but no, we haven't washed anything and many people have commented and we've allowed that comment to continue. So, uh, all right. 
so that's all the questions uh, for now. That's the that's the gist of it. Uh, you can continue to ask questions on social media. We always try to respond as much as we can. Uh, and we'll do the continue to do the best we can to be authentic, to do the best we can to take each uh, issue seriously. I want to close with this. Uh, this is a note um, that we got, and my uh, friend Durbin just put it up on a screen for me so that I can read it. Um, this came from Nikki. I just wanted to share this with you because with you, I wanted to close on a positive note, close on a comment from a viewer uh, that's been impacted greatly. From Nikki, she says, I have shared time and time again about how I love this show and how it impacts me, but tonight I'm grateful on a different level. We have a small group at our church and we are watching The Chosen and then talking about it an episode a week. We haven't been able to attend for a while, so we were so excited to get back tonight. Well, tonight my autistic six-year-old, who appears to not be watching most of the time, kept coming over during the episode and asking questions about who the characters were. And then he surprised me by leaning over during discussion time and saying he wanted to say something. He shared with the whole group about the lady that ran away and how she was happy. He's referring to the woman at the well. The fact that he's watching and learning and finding his voice to communicate what he's noticing is reducing me to a pile of tears tonight. And the majority of the questions during discussion tonight came from the kids asking big questions and making incredible observations. God is stirring up the younger generations and he's using your show to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you if you've contributed to the Come and See Foundation, if you've ever paid it forward, if you've ever invested, if you've ever purchased any of our merchandise. Again, the My Rabbi Walks on Water shirt or the new hat at thechosengifts.com. Uh, Colin, you can put that up as a reminder. But if you've done any of that, um, you have contributed greatly to what I just read. If you've prayed for us, if you've spread the word about us, um, thank you for that. And I know that sometimes things like this happen. Like I said, in the course of 56 episodes, in the course of thousands and thousands of social media posts, in the course, course of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of words that we've written, there are times when you are going to disagree. There are times when it's going to be controversial. There are times when even mistakes are going to be made. And um, But regardless, we are focused on the work. We are focused on... Uh, making a great show if we can. We are focused on honoring God. We are focused on honoring the character and intentions of Jesus in the Gospels. And we are going to continue to focus on an authentic relationship with you and uh, always willing to have these conversations and always trust that uh, at the very least, whether we disagree or not, that uh, we will seek to understand each other, that we will seek to sympathize with each other, and then and only then will we publicly uh, disagree. But... Uh, I love you and appreciate you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Remember, it is not your job to feed the 5,000. It is only to provide the loaves and fish. Have a good night. We meet again, Jonathan. We yes. meet again, Mr. Jenkins. Yes. I wonder if we'll really ever realize what we got to do. We literally brought 5,000 of our most passionate and loyal fans. I got hit with a huge blast of emotion because I'm like, this is what it would have looked like. And it struck me deeply. The disciples asking, we could die? Really, I think, hit you hard in that moment, realizing, no, you're not. Not on this trip. The character of Jesus experiences emotions on an exponential level to the rest of humanity because of who he is. You and I talked about this a couple of years ago about yeah. the walking water. I said, I'm not doing it. <laughs> we know he's fully God, fully man, but you can't play the God part. No. Other than in the action. And I think we were both at one point like, how is this going to go? because now there's more pressure. It's like, well, you have a little bit of success, so does that success affect the direction of the show? And how do I just trust that God's gonna cover me all the way through, no matter what? I'm thinking about nothing other than, I gotta honor God, I gotta tell this story well. We get to explore Jesus's life in ways that we haven't seen before. Just look at where we are and how blessed we are to tell this story. I felt as Matthew that I was just nervous around you. So you could see me stutter or like you would be like, take an olive, Matthew. And Matthew's like, okay. Like, you know, so it's interesting to hear that. Hey, this is Chris. And I'm Jelaine. And we are your Chosen Insiders. And this is The After Show. Every time a brand new episode of The Chosen drops, The After Show is our opportunity to talk about that amazing episode. Because, you know, it's The Chosen. We're going to need to talk about it. We're going to be talking to the cast. We're going to be talking to the writers, to the producers. And Dallas himself, he's going to be popping in from time to time as we dig even deeper into what we just watched. I'm going to argue that. <laughs> and all of this available exclusively on the brand new Chosen app. So download it now because it's free.